Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to show you how to paint an octopus. So I am doing this on an 11 by 14 inch canvas, but this design can work on any size. Let's go over the brushes and colors. We are going to be using a three quarter flat brush, a number 12 flat brush, which is like a half inch size flat brush, number four round brush. So if you don't have these exact brushes, you're welcome to use whatever you have available. I used a white Posca paint pen for the bubbles, but that can also be used for the tentacles if you um, want to use it for that detail. For the colors, we have eight colors in this painting. I have cad yellow light, cad orange hue, turquoise blue, medium magenta, light green permanent, phthalo blue, mars black, and titanium white. These are all the Liquitex Basics colors. You can use whatever brand and colors you have available. I used a piece of chalk to draw the octopus and a soft wet baby wipe to erase leftover chalk that was still showing after I painted. And then I use a paper plate for my palette and a glass mason jar for water. We're gonna go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna position my 11 by 14 inch canvas horizontally. And I'm going to paint the background first. So the background is a really pretty blend of black to phthalo blue to turquoise to kind of a light turquoise color. And we're going to start by loading our three quarter flat in the water and kind of tapping it dry. And let's grab our black and kind of distribute some of that water that's on the brush into the black. And let's grab a little bit of phthalo blue. This, so this is going to make, so I didn't mix it all the way on my palette. So this is like uh, equal parts black and blue together. It's going to make a really, really dark blue. Let's start on the lower right part of our canvas, lower right corner, and the style of these strokes are short choppy strokes that kind of blend on the canvas. So right now we just have a really dark navy blue color that we're creating. And so the goal of this is to blend this to our blue, to turquoise, to our lighter turquoise in the upper left corner. So as we're working our way from the lower right corner to the upper left corner, we're letting these colors gradually get lighter, but it doesn't have to be a perfectly smooth transition. So I just have this area, dark blue, choppy strokes, blended, but not blended all the way. Then I'm gonna rinse my brush off to get all that black off and load it in just the phthalo blue. So I'm letting this blue gently blend with that black, kind of work that transition zone a bit. That means going over that part where that color transitions so it blends. But again, short choppy strokes that kind of go in different angles. It does not have to be a smooth transition. I'm gonna keep going with this and load some more of this phthalo blue on my palette. I'm gonna bring this phthalo blue a little bit further inwards. And we will be blending our turquoise in here in just a bit, but I'm dragging this blue a little bit more inwards. I'm about halfway about half the canvas is painted, a little bit less than half. Blend that back in. It's okay if some of that black kind of drags out with that blue color. And then let's go ahead and introduce our turquoise into this. So we don't need to rinse the brush because we need our dark blue to blend with our turquoise. So let's grab turquoise on the brush. So I have blue and turquoise on my brush. A little bit of water, kind of let that help blend a little bit better. This phthalo blue and this turquoise blend so pretty together. Um, but pretty much the same thing, you're just taking that turquoise, short choppy strokes, blending the phthalo blue. You can even grab more phthalo blue and add that into your turquoise area. It does not have to be a perfect transition of color. Even if there's still some black that kind of dragged over into this turquoise area, that's okay. I'm 
I'm going to load some more of this phthalo and turquoise onto the palette. I'm going to bring this combination a little bit further to the left and I want to introduce my white. So without rinsing the brush, grab a little bit of white. You don't want to load a lot of white on your brush at first because we want to gradually introduce this white. The white's a strong color and it will take over fast. So we want to introduce that very gradually at first. But the goal here is to get our color to be very, very light in the upper left corner. So little tiny bits of white on the brush, short choppy strokes to let that blend. Try not to grab, try not to drag too much of that white into your dark area, but also it doesn't need to blend perfectly. If you find that your paint is drying really, really fast, you can add a little bit of water on your brush, just not too much, a little bit on the tip of the brush to kind of boost that paint a little bit. And then I'm going to go in the very, very upper left part and do almost, it, I'm only loading my brush in white at this point. So it's turning a very light sort of aqua color in the upper left corner. So that's a, as light as this background gets. So I know now I need to blend this lighter part into that sort of medium blue part. And then I can grab some of the other colors to help blend that together so it meets together. We're just filling up the rest of the canvas. In this lower left corner, I'll grab a little bit of phthalo blue, so it's kind of just a little bit darker, and then blend that up into the lighter area without trying to make the upper left corner too dark. So it might be tempting to want to go back and kind of blend some of those darker colors, and if you want to do that, you can go and add more color to that and kind of blend that into the lighter color. But in order to work that paint that's on the canvas, it's not workable because it's dry. We have to add more color to our brush. So I'm just kind of dry brushing some of that lighter color, blending that with the dark. Um, but that is basically it for the background. We need to let this entire background dry before we can do the next step. And the next step is drawing the octopus. So I do have a traceable template for this if you would like to print that out and place a sheet of graphite paper. I recommend white graphite paper for that because it's a dark background. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and draw this with chalk. So I'll show you how to do an octopus drawing. It's actually relatively simple. So the head of the octopus is in the upper right kind of quadrant of the canvas. And I started by doing two little curved lines. And those two little curves are about two and a half inches apart. And then I'm going to take those curved lines and turn them into the octopus head. So it's gonna be a very kind of elongated curved shape. The width of that is about three and a half inches and the height is, of that is about four inches. And then we can start drawing each of the arms. So this one, I just kind of extended that left curve line down and made sort of a, a wide S shape. So this, I did the first line and then our second line. So you want to draw this second line so that it's it allows the arm to be wider at first and then it gets thinner to the end. It doesn't go to a point on the end, it's kind of curved on the end, so wide and then thin. So we're gonna do eight arms and they're kind of just all going in different directions. You're welcome to change the direction. You don't have to make it go the same way that mine are. So this one, a little bit more straight, so I did two kind of lines and then they go thinner, kind of curve, 
at the end. So that one's going down at an angle and then it curves up. And then we can take this one, kind of extend it this way. The nice thing about this design is a lot of these arms, actually about three of them, three or four of them, just go off the canvas. So we don't see the whole arm. We can just take it and they can go right off the canvas and not have to worry about what the rest looks like. And then we can figure out where another one is gonna go. So this one, we can I'm gonna do that shape so that's like the under part of that arm. You don't have to do that now. If it's more simpler just to draw the arm and not the other detail, that's fine too. This one, same kind of thing, starts out thick, goes thin, and then it goes off the canvas. So that one curves down kind of like a slide. And then this one's gonna be a little bit more complex. So this one spirals. If you don't wanna do any spiral things, you don't have to. We're just gonna sketch both of them kind of at the same time. So it's gonna make a loop going to go under itself. It can go over too. And then it's going to go twist to the right and then twist to the left. The lovely thing about working with chalk is it erases. It erases with a wet paintbrush but also erases with like a wet baby wipe. And then we can do Another kind of arm. Just want to make sure that you get to eight. So we have five arms so far. Need three more in there. Technically, we could do less than eight and just assume that the arm is kind of hiding in the back of the octopus. So this one, another complicated sort of spiral thing. Do the one line first and then do my second line next to it. So make sure it starts out thicker and then it goes thin. We can always do the loop and then erase where we want it to erase. So decide if we want it to look like it's going over or under. So we need two more legs in there. And then, so we have two kind of complicated loops. Let's do the other two simpler. So we can do one that is kind of over here. Maybe it's behind this leg and then it's going off the canvas, but again, wide at first and then it goes thin. And then same with right here, we can do another leg going off the canvas. So right here. And next we can go ahead and paint our octopus in. So we're going to make a coral color on our canvas. And to make this coral color, we need titanium white, we need medium magenta, and we need cad orange hue. I'm going to start with a 12 bright brush, load it into the water and tap it dry and grab white, a little bit of pink, a little bit of orange, about equal amounts, pink and orange, with a little extra white in there. Actually gonna add a little bit more orange, so maybe about two parts orange, one part pink, and then four parts white. It does not have to be exact, but it's gonna make a really pretty light coral color. And we're gonna use the full width of the brush. We're gonna start at the head. So these are contouring strokes. That just means that the direction of the stroke is going in the direction of the shape. There's a lot of curves in this painting. So we're gonna do a lot of curved strokes. We can use the tip of the brush to outline the shape of the head. And then we can use the full width of the brush to fill in the rest of the area. So outlining with curves, filling it in with kind of vertical strokes that then kind of go curved when they get to the edge. If you find that you're not uh, filling in your chalk 
drawing exactly and you're changing it, that is perfectly okay. If you find that you're going outside the lines, that is also okay. You don't have to follow your chalk drawing exactly, it's just a guideline. So then we can start working our way down to the octopus arms and those are same colors but the trick with these arms is that we have to adjust our colors as we are painting these. So if you look at the final picture, it's not just solid same color throughout. It varies. There's some dark areas and some light areas where we have overlapping. There might be dark or light where there's overlapping. So let's just keep it simple at first and let's just use the same shade that we were, were using when we filled the head in. And I'm just kind of outlining kind of the edges of these top arm areas and then dragging that paint color back up into the head. It is slightly darker than the head area. So right here, loaded just a little bit of lighter color right there for the bottom part of that arm. Taking the tip of the brush to outline the edge. Remember these legs, these arms are thick at first and then they go thinner. So when you paint, you wanna apply more pressure to the this part, the top part of the arm. The arm that connects to the head area is thick, so more pressure there. And then you kind of release the pressure or use the side of the brush as it goes thin. I will be using a round brush and that round brush is gonna help, especially for the smaller areas. I'm gonna kind of apply a second coat over here, kind of dragging that, some of the darker colors up in there, but not blending it all the way. Then we can take this. So I'm not really going in order here. You can paint this in a different order. Um, so this leg is overlapping the one behind it. So I, on purpose, added lighter color. I'm gonna switch out my water too because we're gonna need water to help with the flow of this color and having that dark blue and black in the water is not gonna be helpful for that. Um, but that leg overlapped the other arm slash leg behind it. So you wanna change the color for that so, so, so it's lighter than the one below it. So that's kind of how we're gonna create overlapping in this. A little bit of water on the brush and then we can, let's do our swirl leg here so we can have it start out thick. So right here, I'm gonna add, I added more orange right there. So that stands out from the head. It's different color, different combination of color. Have it go around in that loop. Again, feel free to um, switch to a different brush. So you, your round brush will be helpful for some of these smaller areas. In fact, I'm gonna grab the round brush right now because this one, this arm is twisty and has some smaller areas to work with. Gonna mix my coral color. So really this whole, all the arms are just a combination of orange and pink and white, but you're adjusting the amount of orange, pink, and white you apply in the different areas. So for the most part, this one so far is just the same color, orange with a little bit of pink. And it's different from the head. So it stands out. But then we can apply white to this to help with the overlapping. So a little bit of white on my brush. And let's see, right here, let's have this overlap this way. So I'm adding that white. And it blends down. And then it gets darker underneath. So right here it turns to more of an orange color. 
So that is how you create the overlapping look. And we can little, add a little bit of white over here to the end. Blend that in with the rest of the orange. And then I'm going to be switching back and forth between this flat brush and round brush. So we can do this leg. Same thing, it's thick at the base and it goes thin. We can change that color to be lighter or darker. I'm going to actually apply a little bit more white in this so it's lighter and it stands out. And then we can do our next arm, adding a little bit of water to the paint on your palette and just kind of twisting your brush is gonna allow that paint to get distributed on the tip, allow for better control. So we're gonna do another one of these loop arms. I'm using the darker color, the orange, so it looks different from what it's connected to. So it's going to make it look like it's behind the head part of the octopus. So dark and it twists. So we can decide if this is going over or under. I'm applying a lighter color. I'm blending that lighter color as it twists and let's make it go over. So see what happened there? That lighter color was overlapping our darker color. So that's going to make it look like really pretty overlapping. It's kind of curved, um, but still narrow at the tip. And then curving it around and blending that in with our dark don't want to allow, allow all that too much of that lighter color into that darker area. I found that painting these arms, the curves, something super relaxing about painting curved lines. Right here, I'm adding lighter color. Kind of blending that in. So as you're painting this, you might find that you're adding darker color where I'm adding lighter color or vice versa, and that's okay. So the point is to just alter your colors, use um, different variations of your white to make some areas lighter, some darker, ultimately to make um, the illusion of overlapping in this painting. So we can just continue doing what we're doing. We have another longer leg. So this one is a little tricky because it's behind this other curvy leg. So we wanna make sure that we either go darker or lighter because it's, we don't wanna make it look like it's attached right here. We wanna make it look like it's behind. So in this case, I'm making it go darker. And then the one that's overlapping above it is going to have more white in there to make it look lighter. So there's my light color and I can go back with this one and do my light color right here. So now we have that look like looking like it's in front and it stands out. Adding a little bit of water to your brush is fine helps with the flow of that paint and helps with the blending. You just want to don't want to add too much water. It shouldn't be dripping down and it shouldn't be see-through. This part curves. Then we can take this have that go down. So I'm going to actually 
rinse my 12 bright, kind of set that aside and use the round brush for the rest of this. Take that orange down here so this leg arm gets a little bit darker. And it's darker because it's behind another arm that's lighter. Right here, added some dark. Let's get some pink in there to help blend the rest of that. So that's dark right here so that the one leg under it is lighter and it stands out. And then I'm blending that back up into the head area. So you don't have to over blend your colors. You can leave it unblended. Add in some more dark here. And then maybe some more light as it curves right here. And then this leg, we're adding a lighter color so that it stands out. And we can do the magenta. on the end of this arm and then blend that with the rest of it. Again, yours will look different from mine. Um, your darks will be different. Your lights will be different. Really, it's just the technique that we're doing the same and the technique is basically changing the lights and the darks in different areas and blending it, but not over blending it. So it creates that different variety of color so that the octopus is not just solid, the same color throughout. We have darks and lights, and that is achieved simply by using these three colors. So I'm adding more light down here, blending it with the rest. Um, one thing that we haven't really mentioned is we, we are going to paint a lot of the suckers on the arms, um, but we don't really need to worry exactly where those gonna, are going to be and whether that part of the leg needs to be light or dark. That is not um, something that we're really worried about right now. I'm adding a little bit of white. On the end of the spiral piece right here and on the edge. It's a little bit of outlining with that. Helps that stand out just a little bit. So if you notice the two leg arm legs at the top that are spiraled those ones are actually kind of darker than the rest so I used more orange in those ones You're going to see in this video that I forget to paint the eighth arm that's over on the right. Um, so we end up with seven arms for a little bit until the very end. I realized I didn't paint the eighth one and that one gets painted later. Um, so don't forget to paint that arm as well. 
But really right here, I'm just kind of just touching up everything. You don't want to over blend it. Um, sometimes that's like super tempting. You just want to keep painting and painting and then all of a sudden everything's like the same color. That's not really what we want. But also we want to make sure the edges of all the arms are nice and smooth. I know that's kind of hard because we have a lot of chalk lines and it looks messy with the chalk. So what you could do is you can dry this painting and then go in with like a baby wipe and gently wipe the chalk lines off. And then you can go from there and kind of touch up wherever it needs to be kind of smoothed out on the edges. Any little bit of white on the edge of this one, blending that in. You don't have to render this the same way. If you're happy with it, you can move on to the next step. Next, I'm going to paint the eyes. So we have two kind of oval shaped eyes on the edges of the head area. So this is still number four round brush and this is just the orange. And so I'm just going to paint an oval and kind of in the lower area. And then this one, same thing, but it's kind of sticking out on the edge. So if you want them both to stick out, you can. Or you can have them both be like right in the inside part. We can make this stick out a little bit better too. Then without rinsing your brush, add a little tiny bit of white to the tip of the brush and then go back over your ovals. And in the center part, gently add that white in there. So the center is kind of lighter and it makes the edges darker because that first layer is the darker orange. So it gives it kind of a three dimensional look. And then we're gonna rinse and we are gonna let this dry before proceeding. I went ahead, you can see how I forgot that leg. Um, I went ahead and wiped off the chalk lines. So at this point you may find, okay, well maybe I need to touch up this leg because it's not as smooth or you like it and you're gonna move on to the next step. Um, the next step, I'm actually gonna add yellow inside of the eye. So this is cad yellow light. This is the only time in this painting where this yellow shows up. So I'm just taking that round brush and the yellow and filling the inside of those eyes with the yellow. And then we're gonna let those eyes dry before we add the other detail to it. So rinse off your number four round brush. And then we are going to do all of the suckers next. So go ahead and load your number four round brush in the titanium white. Let's start with this arm at the very top. We're gonna to do a little oval and it's hanging out the edge just slightly. And then we're gonna apply more ovals along the edge of that arm and each one gradually gets smaller and smaller to the point where they're just little dots on the canvas. And then we can do another set next to the first set. So this one is pretty much in the center of the arm. Little oval. And a Work your way down, and again, it gets smaller and smaller. You can use a white paint pen for this if that seems easier because this is such a small detail. And then we can go on to the next arm. So this one, I'm actually gonna paint this line here. So it makes it look like it's kind of twisted, and we see the under part at this part. So same thing, ovals, and it's okay if they hang off the edge a little bit and they get smaller 
The nice thing about this arm is it goes off the canvas so we don't have to worry about that many details. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do, so this one we only see the suckers on this part and then they twist and we don't see the rest of them. So that's kind of the trick with this is we don't have to paint suckers on all of the arms, cover all the arms, we can just paint on parts of it assuming that we only see the under part of the arm in some areas and not all of the areas. So I only did one row of suckers there. I didn't do, do a set of two. This one, we can do that kind of twisty line thing again. So I did like a little diagonal line and then same thing, the ovals. It's okay if they're kind of hanging off on the edge and they get smaller as they go to the tip of the line of the arm until we just do like little dots. Then I can do a second row. So it's okay if you stagger them, they don't have to be exactly next to each other. Then we can do another set of ovals here, but not on the entire arm. We only see them at this part. Little dots as they kind of get smaller. And then we can do the suckers down here. We can do one roll instead of two rows. And again, these ones get so small to the point where they turn into little dots. So this one. We don't technically have to paint the suckers on each of them. So this leg could have done without any suckers. We could have just assumed it was just the front part. Then I'm going to load a little bit of Mars Black on my palette. So let's assume that our yellow part of the eyes is dry. If it's not, then you'll have to come back to this step. We don't want it to be too wet in order for this to work. So I'm just gonna do a little black oval in the center part of each of the eyes. So still using the number four round brush. Make this left one a little bit bigger. Then this next step is optional. You don't have to do this if you're simplifying the painting. So let's go ahead and uh, rinse the brush and let's use the orange. So this is cat orange hue. And in the center of each of these suckers, I'm just applying one little stroke of the orange. Essentially it's an oval shape. I'm painting the inside oval shape with orange that darkens the inside part up just a bit. Um, I didn't do it to the smaller ones that ended up just being dots. Next, I'm going to do one more detail to the eye and add uh, some white texture to some areas of the octopus. So I'm gonna go ahead and rinse number four round, round brush off and grab just a little bit of white on the tip of the brush. And then 
we want to do like a little white sort of highlight dot right in the upper part, upper right part of each of the black parts of the eyes. And then I'm going to do a little bit of texturing on the left part of the octopus. I'm going to do, this is also an optional step. If you don't want to do this detail, you don't have to, but upper left sort of part of the head. I just did, did these little kind of textured dots. And then some of that I added a little bit of pink into to kind of dim the white so it's not super, super bright. So super light pink and white, making the little tiny strokes in the upper left, left part over here. So it kind of highlights the octopus. Over here on the top part of his arm as well. I'm only doing this kind of at the top part of some of the arms and on the upper left part of the head. And then I also added a few little dot textures on the left part of the eye, just along the edge. We're going to move along and do the bubbles next. So for the bubbles, I used a white Posca paint pen. If you don't have a paint pen or if you don't want to use a paint pen, you can do the same thing that I'm going to do with this with a round brush and titanium white. So with these bubbles, we're going to do kind of detailed, almost realistic looking bubbles. I'm just going to take my pen and I'm going to draw different sized bubbles kind of all throughout. So up here, there's a bunch of little ones, some medium sized ones between some of the arms. There's a few down here. So kind of scattered throughout. Wherever you feel like a bubble should show up. I didn't put them in all places of the water. Just kind of made them go down the middle portion, diagonal middle portion of the painting. And then we can paint the details of our bubbles in. Did one more down here. So I did use a round brush for the detailed part of it. Um, you'll need your round brush, titanium white, and a little cloth to wipe your brush off because the first layer of these bubbles we're going to do dry brush style. So let's do titanium white. Load our brush in the white, but wipe it off because we want this to look very see-through and dry. So I'm not going to paint the entire circle. I'm just going to paint like part of the circle. That one went outside the line, so that's okay. So the bigger one, it's easier to kind of see what I'm doing. Just paint part of the circle, kind of like the upper left part. And I took my finger and just kind of smeared it. So we can just say paint the upper left part of the circle, smear the rest but we want a lot of that, the color of the ocean showing through that bubble because it's clear. So upper left part of the circle, paint it dry brush style, but don't paint the entire circle in solid. And then we can add color to our bubbles so it makes it look like the color of the octopus is reflecting on the bubbles. So I loaded yellow and pink on my palette. Let's just load our brush in the pink. I know I grabbed yellow too, but let's just do pink right now. And so to create this reflection, 
We're just going to do little tiny kind of curved strokes on the inside edge of each of the circles. So the part of the bubble that's facing the octopus is where that little pink reflection is. So just little tiny curved stroke. It's easier to see what I'm doing on the big one. So the little curved strokes, they get kind of smaller form, almost like a triangular shape. So this paint is not being applied very thick at all. Very thin layer of paint. And then we can do our yellow color. So I didn't rinse my brush, I just grabbed the yellow. And then next to each of the little pink pieces, I'm gonna do kind of the same thing, but very, very thin layer of paint, little tiny curves on the edge that kind of go to a point towards the middle. Again, a lot of that bubble is still, we can still see the color of the water through the bubble. We are reminded that it's supposed to be a clear bubble, see-through bubble, so it's not solid. Little tiny yellow strokes. And then we can do a white highlight on top of that. So I'm gonna rinse and grab just the white so in each of the bubbles, I'm doing a bright curve. So this is not dry brush, not translucent. It's bright and thick. So a little curve in the upper left part of each of the bubbles. A little curve. That's going to give your bubble that kind of shiny look. And then if you need to, you can go back with your paint pen and you can kind of touch up the outer edge, but not all of these really need to be touched up. This next added detail is optional. So this is light green permanent and I'll be using my four round brush. Basically, I'm going to paint the seaweed. So we have this flowy sort of seaweed happening over here in the lower left corner of the painting. So I'm just starting out kind of thick with these lines and they're kind of going diagonally and swaying, mostly diagonal to the right, although some can kind of sway differently. You can add a little bit of white to your green and that brightens it up, especially over some of the darker colors where it may not be showing up. I did not want any of my seaweed to overlap the arms. If you want some of that to overlap, if you wanna kind of play around with that, you can. I just didn't wanna mess up any of the arms by overlapping with that green. So just a few seaweed lines just gives it something interesting in the lower left portion of the background. So I am varying the color. Some of the pieces are longer, some are shorter. Some are swaying mostly kind of vertical. Some are swaying more diagonally. Adding bits of white in there to kind of brighten up some of the pieces. And then the last little detail I'm going to do is little dots. So with the titanium white, 
These are assumed to be little tiny bubbles kind of way in the distance, but I'm just adding them kind of in between some of these seaweed lines, mostly on the left part of my painting. Just little dots kind of here and there. Some dots are a little bit bigger, some smaller. And lastly, I did go in and add that eighth arm in there, an arm without any of the suckers and just the pink and orange combination. But that's it. This is the conclusion of how to paint an octopus. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.